Hey guys, so I'm going to make a quick video showing you how to stitch a mosaic together in PixInsight. I'm going to try to make it very very quick and straight to the point. A big thanks to Ross's astrophotography, uh, that's how I learned uh, from his video, so thanks so much. Here I'm just going to show you guys how I did it on my Rofuchi image, which has four panels. The first thing I did is I imported all the masters on PixInsight and I kind of tried to make the mosaic manually, uh, just visually, right? So here, that's what the, the image should look like. And as you can see, I looked at those two stars here, those two bright stars on the bottom right, and tried to align each of these four uh, panels onto those two bright stars. So this is what it's supposed to look like at the end. And uh, yeah, exciting stuff. So we only have three steps to go through. Uh, the first one will go to script and image analysis and find image solver. This will help us plate solve our images. So as you can see here, the script uh, can be populated with either active windows or list of files. So um, go ahead and select which one you want. I tried both and for some reason, it seems like active window uh, to me wasn't working at first. So I would do list of files and just get the files from your computer right away. So here I just imported all the, the master files into here. Output file suffix does not really matter. It's just going to create um, four new files with this at the end. I'm not really sure what WCS stands for. I don't really care either. Um, actually, I do care. So if you guys know, let me know what WCS stands for. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, uh, once you have your four files here, you want to go in the bottom here and check the uh, parameters. So here, uh, it might look confusing and scary at first, but it's very simple since nowadays, almost all images um, that you take have all this data already um, saved into their fits header. So in this case, for example, it already knows the RA deck date and time, pretty much everything, including the focal length of your telescope and the pixel size. So everything is already by default populated. If it's not, you'll have to either enter those manually or uh, look for them into search. So you could click on search and for example, in my case, I would type Antares or Rofuji and um, it should find it in there. But normally you should have already filled out by itself. Next, we have the model parameters. We don't really care about this. I just choose the automatic catalog, which uh, should work in most cases. If not, maybe try a different one. Um, but in my case, it worked really well. And then just launch that. Uh, you don't have to change anything else. I just launched this one and it's going to create four new files with WCS at the end. Okay, so next you want to go to step two, which is script once again. This time go to mosaic and look for mosaic by coordinates. This is going to use the plate solving we just did and uh, use those coordinates to know which um, alignment it's supposed to be. By the way, uh, this was taken with a RASA. If you use a RASA or for example, a Newt, uh, be careful because your images may be flipped and uh, that may confuse the plate solving. So be sure to, to flip your images. So once I opened my master files here, I flipped them using those shortcuts on the bottom, just so it's like in a regular uh, way. If not, you might uh, have an error message when you try to plate solve them. So here, mosaic by coordinates. Uh, let me clear those files because this was from last time. So here, just go on to add files and you look for the um, files that it created from the last script. So in my case, so I know it's a mess. Uh, in my case, I think I made them into panels ready. And yeah, and you can see here, one, two, three, four. Those are the ones with a WCS at the end. And once you add these ones, uh, you can simply um, go down here. I did not change anything here. I left Mercator. Um, I'm not sure this makes a huge difference. In my case, it was fine. And uh, down here to output images, make sure you select a new folder so that the, um, the files here will be saved again. But this time I will be named um, with registered at the end. And then just launch it. And by the way, let me show you guys what those uh, WCS underscore registered files look like, uh, just so you can understand uh, what's going on here before we go to the last step, which will be um, to combine them. So let's open them right now. So as you can see here, those four open files 
or the WCS registered files and this will be the final size of the image but now of course before they're combined um, it's all black. So step one did the plate solving, step two used the plate solving to know uh, in which square to put those uh, frames and now the last step will be to simply stitch them. So the last step will be in process, all processes and then look for merge mosaic. So where is that? Gradient merge mosaic. There we go. And so this one I did uh, very simply. I just added my files. So you have to find the registered files, those ones. And then in my case, I just kept everything by default. I know Russ in his video says to change some stuff, uh, for example, the shrink radius and uh, this to overlay. Uh, in my well, in my case, I just went ahead and used the default values and it worked just fine. So I guess it depends on your image. Maybe at first give it a go with the uh, default values and if you see some very bad lines or some distorted stars, uh, maybe go ahead and change those values. Try overlay, try to increase the shrink radius and all that. But um, in my case, for this data, the default values were fine. So once you launch this, um, you should have uh, your final mosaic master file. So this is the master file that I got from the stitching. The only thing I did by the way was to crop the edges a bit because there were some uh, black lines but that was very subtle so I just cropped you thing and uh, then I make crop but um, besides that I mean everything looks fine. If you zoom in you might see some slight distortion I guess here and uh, you might see some lines too here and there. Those lines, those mosaic lines, might become more uh, noticeable once you're actually processing your data. When you start bringing out the details and bringing out the, uh, the colors, that might also bring out some of the lines. Um, but once you have those lines, it's usually easy to fix if you remove the stars and uh, try to clone stamp around. And that's what I did. So, um, But yeah, overall looks good. So this is the result of the stitching. And honestly, uh, PixInsight was very uh, simple to use here in this case, just three steps, and that was done. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Uh, I'll have a text version below if you want to check it out and save it in case you want to uh, refer to it uh, in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time, and class guys.